Hi, my name is George Pearson and this is a special video for Photoshop Elements. This is a special series dealing with holidays and seasons and I'll be doing a few of these on and off throughout the next several months. A lot of these will be using imagery that I found for free on the internet. Some are, are totally created here inside of Photoshop Elements. If I'm using a picture from the internet there will be a link to that picture in the description. Click on that link and you can then download the image for your own use. Okay, let's go ahead and get on to the video. In this special Photoshop Elements video, we'll be looking at how to create a Christmas card right here. Now, we'll be doing this inside of Photoshop Elements 13. The techniques I'll be showing you will work with other versions of Photoshop Elements as well. Now this is based upon an image I found online. Let's bring this up here. Here we go. This is from a free site online, free download. And I have a link for this image inside the description. Let's go back to the description and you'll find the link for the actual image if you want to work along with this video. And we'll then modify this and end up with this Christmas card. Okay, let's start over here and we'll just begin working on this image. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to get this scaled down a little bit closer to what we want, want you know, something in this range in here. And before I ever do anything I always make a copy of the backup first. I'll just copy that background right there. It gives me a backup copy of the background. And I can then hide that. This is just in case I mess things up I can always go back to that original. Just a habit that I'm in. Alright, now let's take a look at this and kind of roughly get the shape we want in here. We'll do that with the crop tool and let's let it come in. There we go. Now I'll pull the crop tool over here a little bit and I want to center that tree. There we go. And bring the sides in a little bit. We'll adjust this a little bit more specifically once I get this basically set up. So that's basically what I want, kind of kind of like that. And then we'll then again adjust that further. So there's our first basic rough crop. Go ahead and get that locked in. There we go. Now I want this to be at a regular size for a card. So you can possibly find envelopes for it. At least it'll be a, a good size card. Now the logic behind this is that this is going to be the right side of our picture. The left side will be blank. We'll be, white. we'll be putting that in last. And that's the back of the card. Inside of the card would be the exact opposite. On the inside you'd do a left and a right side and your message would go on the right hand side. I'll show you how to do that just a little bit later on. Okay, let's now take this and modify the size. This is again, this is just our rough size. Let's now be more specific on the size. Go up here to image, come down to resize and image size first. Notice that I'm at 72 resolution. I want to have this at 300 resolution because we want to make this printable. And then I need to adjust the width and the height. Leave these things as is right now. Let's adjust the height of the card. Let the width fall where the width is going to fall. Now on the height, to make this a standard card size, I'm going to be using 8 point, actually 6.875. Let me just type that in here. 6.875 gives us a width of 5.821, which is fine because that's almost what I need anyway. It's a little bit smaller than that. So there we go. So there's the basic settings. 6.875 resolution at 300. And then let the width fall where the width falls. Choose OK. There you go. There's the size so the height is now correct. Let me just open this up a little bit. There we go. The height's correct. It's a little bit too wide still but our tree is centered. That's fine. Now let's make this the correct width. We'll do that over here with image, resize, and canvas size. Now you want to have the image staying centered just like this. That's fine. There's the height. It's a little bit off. That should be 8.75 not 77. Now the width, what I want here is 5.375. That's 3 eighths of an inch wide. And you know, 5 by 3 eighths. And this is 6 and 7 eighths if you want to be you know, technical on that. 
So there we go, that's the size, that's our finished size for the card. Choose OK and proceed. That just clips the sides in a little bit for us. And there we go, so there is the basic layout. Now a few things on this picture before we go any further. Notice back here there's kind of a, a street light back there. I want to get rid of that street light and I want to bring the tree down a little bit. So let's do the street light first. Let's zoom in on our picture. This part is, is easy. We're just going to do a little clone stamp right there. It keeps on going down here, but you can't see that part, so I'm going to ignore that. Just a real fast clone stamp here. Got our clone stamp tool. Let's check our brush size. Okay, brush is soft brush. 21, the actual size. Yeah, 21, that's fine. Opacity 100. That all looks good. And just grab just outside here. So I'll hold down the Alt key and click and pull straight over and I'll just paint that out. And the reason I'm using a soft brush here is because I want to make sure this blends in well. Now right at that point I need a hard edge against that tree so let's just change our brush. Hard brush 19 is fine. And I'll just come in here and just kind of tap right there just enough to get rid of that bit. There we go. Okay, that is now taken care of. Let's zoom out, hold the Alt key down, and zoom out a little bit. There we go. So the picture's clean. Now the tree is too high up in the picture, so I want to bring the tree down. I'm just going to use my cursor keys here, the down arrow, and I'll bring the tree down a bit. What I want is about the same amount of space down here as I have up here. I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact. Just an eyeball estimate is good enough. Okay, that's fine. Now I want to have this blue right at the very, very top. I want to have that in the background there to extend the sky up. So let's zoom in real tight. There we go. I'm going to grab that blue, just eyedropper, right against the top edge there. That's fine and then paint bucket and fill that top section. Notice there's a bit of a grain down here. There's no grain up there. If you want to be really picky about this, what you can do is do the clone stamp tool and then clone stamp up into there. And it's not that critical actually, but I'll just do it a little bit here to kind of roughen the edge up a bit. I'm going to make the brush here. Let's go to a large soft brush, a little larger. I'm just going to grab from here and then a little clone stamp up like that. That gets rid of that edge and it kind of softens up the very top. Get some of that texture up there. Let's take it off the side. Same thing over here. Now when we get the very side, right side, I'll have to reposition my tool here, my brush. It'll run off the edge. Okay, almost there. Just kind of just blending in that edge up there. This is going to be very dark when we're finished. And it'll just fade out. Okay, went a little too far up there, so I'm going to do a little bit more here. There we go. And grab out there and bring it down to the final over here on the right hand side. Okay, that should be fine. Let's just fit on screen and then zoom in a little bit and see how we did. Now you may want to do a little bit of touch up on that. Okay, it looks like I could use a little bit of touch up right in here. Let's just go ahead and do that quickly. I'll go for a little larger brush size on this. Again, this isn't critical up here at the top. It's going to be pretty well hidden. Okay, got a little of that tree in there. I can get rid of that. Finish this off right there. All right, there we go. That's fine. Let's just back out just a touch. Again, not critical up there. You just want to give us a little more space. A little bit right there. I see. I'm just going to take that out. There we go. All right. So far, so good. Now. We want to 
darken this down, make it a darker image. And I'll do that with an adjustment layer. So go up here to Layer, Adjustment Layer. And the reason I'm using an adjustment layer is so I can go back and I can adjust this later if I want to. Choose OK. Gives me a new adjustment above there. We're doing levels on this one. Now notice how the levels work. We have dark and white, or you know, black and white and grayscale. That's our input. Down here is the output, black and white. If I move the black over here on the left side, notice how that darkens down the picture quite a bit. So I get that down about where I want it. There we are. If we take the gray tone, I can lighten or darken the midtones, bring the midtones up a little bit. So I'm darkening down the darks and bring the midtones up a little bit. And I can bring back some of the whites down here. So on this particular picture, what this is doing is it's giving me a more contrasty picture. The brights are a little bit brighter, the darks are a lot darker, and the midtones are a little bit on the dark side. On the output level, you can bring the whole thing down over here if you want to. This looks more like a nighttime shot, like that kind of take some of the contrast out. We'll leave the contrast in for our picture. And you can lighten it up and remove contrast this way. So the output levels are going to be giving you contrast adjustments. Your most contrast is out on the sides like that. Okay, that's pretty close. I probably want to go a little bit darker, I think, on this on the dark side, so I'll pull that over a little bit. I just want to really darken the sky. And let's just play around with the midtones so it looks good. That's pretty good. Now again, that's on its own layer here, an adjustment layer with the levels control. So I can always go back and I can adjust this later if I want to. All right, so far so good. We're pretty close. Now we need the stars. We need the star on top of the tree and we need the Christmas balls to finish us off. And all that we'll do here with our different brush tools. Let's do our stars first. Make a new layer. Come down here. Let's reset this to the originals. There we are. Bring the white to the front and on the back, double click there and let's make that kind of a very light blue. If you want to be exact, you know, something in here, 85E3FB. Not critical, just, you know, just kind of a light blue in there. Main one is the foreground. Now we want to have a nice different brush for this. Let's go over to our brushes. Here's what gets fun. There's our brushes. Click on the brushes. At the top you can choose different brush sets. We're going to go here to the assorted brushes. All kinds of fun stuff in here. Scroll down a bit. You know, see if this is on the screen. There we go. Right down here. It's kind of starburst. There are two starbursts. One has a solid center, one has an open center. You want the solid center. It says 50 down here. That's just the size of the brush. So this this is the star. It'll, it'll say 50 on your list, but Again, that's just the size of the brush. So we want that starburst small is the name. Okay, double click on that. That sets that brush in. You can now see the size of the brush. If I come over here and I just click once, you can see the size of the brush right there. It's pretty small. I'll leave that one on there. Maybe bring it up just a little bit, maybe 75 or so. Let's just do one there. That's pretty good. Just a little bit of a, a burst. Now, I don't want to spend all day putting in a whole bunch of little stars. So we're going to let Photoshop Elements do that for us. Click on the brush settings in here and bring scatter up quite a ways and spacing up quite a ways. Close that down. Now if we look over here at our brush, you see we have kind of, it's no longer showing us a, a sweep of a brush here, it's showing little spots. That's what that does for us. So if I come in here now and I just paint a little bit like this, it's going to give me stars kind of randomly spaced. So that will make it much easier to give us a random starry background. And just a few more of these around in here. Now because we're painting them onto its own layer, you can always come back in and erase some of these things out if you're not happy with their positioning. I'm making them a little bit larger here than my opening sample because I think it looks better being a little bit larger now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, that looks good. We have our stars up there. And again, that spacing was all because of this brush setting over here. 
That's the scatter and the spacing. The scatter means it doesn't go exactly where you paint, but it kind of goes around a little bit. And spacing controls how far apart they go. So that you know gives us a bit of a randomness in here. Notice also there's some randomness in the size as well. So having this randomness helps to make it look more naturalistic. Okay, now staying with the same exact brush, bring the scatter down to zero, bring spacing down to zero. So everything is on zero over here. Everything is zeroed out. And let's bring our brush size way up. This is going to be our star on top. You see, there's the size of this star. Maybe about there, 488, 500 in there someplace. I want this on its own layer again, so make a new layer. This layer here, this is the stars. This one's the tree topper. reason I'm making it on its own layer so I can reposition if I'm not quite happy. But somewhere around in here, now just begin to click several times. That's four, five, six clicks. Looks pretty good. Okay, stars and tree topper. All we have left now are to put in the Christmas balls, the Christmas ornaments. Now those are round, so we want to have a round brush. Go back over here to our brushes. Go back to the default brushes. Choose a hard brush. One that says 13 right there, that's a hard round, actually 19, there it is, hard round 19, double click. And let's look at the size. It's pretty small, so I'm going to bring the size up here. That's still too small. Bring it up a bit more, a little more than that. That's pretty good. I want these kind of on the large side. And I don't want it, you know, too realistic. I'm going for a little more of a, a dramatic look. So there's the size. You can see right down there. There's the size of that brush. Now, we're going to be doing a jitter effect on this as well. But I want random colors. And we only have two colors to choose from, a foreground and a background. So I'll double click on foreground. Let's set the foreground to red. Click on the background color here. Let's set the background to yellow, which is right up in here somewhere. There we go. Foreground red, background yellow. Now let's go back over here to our brush settings and hue jitter. This is going to shift back and forth between the foreground and the background color and other colors in between. I can do a little bit of scattering if I want to as well. Make it a little bit easier. This just puts in some randomness on this. But the main one here is the hue jitter. Close that one down. Okay, let's make a new layer and this is going to be our ornaments. There we go. And I'll just click right there. And notice how as I click, they're not going exactly where I'm putting them. And the color is shifting between these two colors. So it's giving me a randomness on the color, which, which helps a lot. Okay, that's the first set. Let's do a second set down here. Click on the foreground color. Let's make this into a blue. Kind of a nice rich blue. That looks good. Let's do our background. I want the background into the greens in here somewhere. Foreground, background, everything else stays the same. Let me just paint some of these in here and again it's going to change the color for me automatically. So there we go. There's the Christmas ornaments. And again the color change in here, the color shift, the randomness on that is handled by the foreground and background color and again by using the brush settings and adjusting that hue jitter. Okay, so far so good. Now let's pull everything back to zero again. Close that down so you don't forget that. Reset our colors right there. Black and white. Set that to foreground. We'll be getting back to this in just a second. Okay, now we want to give some dimension to these ornaments and we'll do that with layer style. So we're on our ornaments layer, layer and layer style right here. Let's go to our style settings. A few things in here to start off with bevel. And we can adjust the bevel until they look round. Right about like that. If I go too far they'll be looking kind of strange. But you'll find a, a spot in there 
where they look pretty round. That's pretty good right there. Let's change the lighting angle. I want to have these lit by that star at the top. So I'll pull this kind of pointing straight up. There it goes, so the light straight up. Now if you want to, you can put a little glow. On the inside, just a little bit. That gives me a little bit of a hint. It shows up best on these dark ones down there. It's a little bit of an inner glow. You can also do an outer glow if you want to. The outer glow is up to you. It adds a little bit of a magical look to it. I'm going to bring the opacity down just a, just a hair on there. It kind of softens up the edge. A little more magical look. So you can go, if you want to go harder, leave that one off. It has a harder look, more naturalistic, more realistic look. Leave that on a little more magical looking. It's up to you. But that gives us the roundness on those. Choose OK. You click down here. So there we go. There are the ornaments and there is the roundness to them. The last thing I want to do is put in a highlight on all of these. So there's the ornaments. Let's make a new layer. This will be highlight. Or reflections, you know, whatever a reflection of this star shape up here. All right, now let's go back to our paintbrush again and back to our brushes, back to the assorted brushes, scroll down and back to that same brush we used for the star at the top and these stars. Same thing. Double click sets that one in place. You can see the size there. Let's bring that size up so we can actually see this thing. Okay, that's too big. Somewhere in here. And we're using white. And let's zoom in. Right there, that's pretty good. You see how those are all the same brush for the stars. And back to our paintbrush, I can check my size. Maybe a little larger in here. The bigger it is, the more obvious it is. Sometimes on a graphic stock card, a little bit more obvious is a better look. Okay, so now I want to have this kind of upper right hand corner just a little bit. And give it a couple of taps. And I'll do this for every single one of these ornaments. And just a couple of taps couple of taps and just work on down like that and almost finished just about ending up right down here kind of come right down to the end I think that's all of them and let's zoom out a little bit and take a look and see how our Christmas tree looks there we go I made those a little bit more noticeable than I had in my sample. Again, I just thought about it, I thought it would be a little nicer being a little little brighter. But there we go. That is a Christmas tree and the whole thing is done from a found image on the internet. Let me just hide all of this stuff and we'll take a look back through there. There's the found image. We cropped that in, used layer con or use a level here, adjustment levels to adjust the values, put in our stars, put our tree topper on top, put our ornaments in with some layer styles, and then put some highlights on the ornaments. And there you go. That is how to make a quick Christmas card here. Now I mentioned that we'd actually had to do the rest of this so it's actually a card that you can use. And we need to make this twice as wide and put this on the right hand side of the card. So your fold would be right down here. It'll open up on the, on the right side fold on the left hand side. So let's go up here to image, resize, canvas size, put this to the right hand side over here so the image stays to the right hand side and then you want to make the width up here twice as wide as that. I'll just pull out my calculator here and that's going to be 5.377 times 2 and I'll type this one in for you. Width is 10.754. And we'll 
zoom out. So there's the card that's right in the dead center right there. Let's put a new layer here above our background layer. New layer right there. Let's fill that layer with white. We already have white over here. That's fine. Paint bucket and fill. There you go. If you want to put your name down here as the creator of the card, that's where you would stick that name. And then when you print this, print this with crop marks and you'll then have your crop marks. Now, to get the inside of the card, this is the outside of the card. The inside of the card would be exactly the same thing. You'd want to print it, just flip your paper over, print once this side, print it a second time inside. And the inside of your card, you're going to want to put your text over here on this side of the card. So, let's just grab a little guide right here, a little guideline. And then I'll hide everything. There we go. Let's make a new layer here. That kind of represents the inside. So this is where your text would go. And I'll just type this in. I'm not going to take any time here to come up with, with a clever saying for the inside of the card. But your text goes over here on this side. And the text, obviously, that's quite a bit too large. Let's just get this out of the way. And let's bring our text size down. And give us a second to come in. And let's check our text color. Oh, there we go. That's what I thought. Set that to black, and we'll try that again. and readjust our size. Again, that's too large. Bring that down just a bit. So your text goes in here and your saying goes down there and then all the standard text stuff of course come in here and choose your your font, all that fun creative stuff in here. I'll leave that that part for you. But there you go. That is where the inside of the card goes. So you simply print that, flip your paper over endwise, not this way, but this way, and then hide this one, bring all this back up again. There's the outside of the card. Flip it over, hide all this stuff. There's the inside of the card right there. Okay, that's how to make a Christmas card. Last thing is take a quick look at the settings for the printout on this. To file and print. Give it a second to bring up the print dialog box. There we are. Now you want to have this horizontal, not vertical. You see, I have two different ways of looking at here. There's the horizontal version. That's the one I want. Orientation. And let's go to our second page here. There we go. There's a second page. You don't want this to scale to fit. You want this to be the exact size. And that's pretty good. Now this is an 8.5 by 11 page. Let's make sure that we're... Here it goes. Undo crop to fit. We don't want that. Print size. Actual size. That's good. Individual print, that's fine. Paper size, that's correct. Settings all looks good. Vent settings, that's from my actual printer I'll be using, so that's all fine. And so we've got our more options down here. Just checking everything that we have in here. There we go. Print crop marks. Choose OK. And that gives little, little marks right out there. And the reason for the crop marks is that it will help you then you know, cut your image out. Again, it folds right here. Print it two times, one time with this image. Flip it over, put it back in your printer. Second time is with the text inside. Again, using your same crop marks to crop that image out. And choose print. And there you go. Instant Christmas card.
Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.